Howdy. Welcome to the second episode of the Theater Cues podcast. We are thrilled to have you with us today. I say we're as if there's multiple people in the studio. It's just me. So I'm thrilled to have you today. Anyway, we've, I've got a super fun show for you with an amazing guest. But before you get to listen in on today's interview, I think we should start with a theater fun fact. Actors, directors, stagehands, the whole lot have many superstitions going through their heads while in the theater. One of the lesser known superstitions involves the spirits that haunt the theaters of Broadway. Ooh, right? In fact, according to Playbill, Broadway and some off-Broadway theaters leave a single light on stage when the theater is not in use. Some people claim that these lights are placed on the stage in order to drive out troublemaking spirits, while others claim that these lights are left on in order to keep the theater's ghosts content. But in reality, it's placed there mainly for safety reasons, as per the Occupational Safety and Health Administration's rules that some light must be left on in some theater spaces, like Broadway's The New Amsterdam Theater. So in reality, the ghost lights are there to prevent you from falling into the orchestra pit and becoming one of those theater haunts. Yep, that's all true. Even some regional theaters like Arizona Theater Company keep ghost lights on. And I'm not sure if it's for safety or for ghost wrangling, so I'll keep you updated on further developments. Anyway, speaking of local theaters... Our guest today works at Live Theater Workshop, a theater here in Tucson. He's a teacher, director, actor, writer, and frankly, a man of many hats. Frankly, our guest today is Stephen Frankenfield, who has been nominated for numerous local awards and has been in many productions, such as Baskerville, A Sherlock Holmes Mystery, Arsenic and Old Lace, It's a Wonderful Life, among many other outstanding shows. So without further ado... Let's roll today's interview with the incredible, the amazing, the super talented Stephen Frankenfield. Hi, Stephen. Hey, Nate. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. It's been a little bit. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I guess I will... Uh, dive right in and uh awesome. first are we off, recording yes yeah oh amazing let's do this jump right in <laughs> all right so uh first off i guess just sort of uh, introduce yourself um you know some of your uh, greatest hits of your career directing acting writing all that jazz uh yeah um well uh, my name is stephen frankenfield and um Let's see. Um, I greatest hits. I mean, I, I've, I've done a lot of shows. I've done anywhere from gosh, I don't even know. I've been acting for thirty about twenty eight to thirty years if you count high school, about thirty something. So I've done a lot of shows. Um, uh, if I were to pinpoint a couple, there's a, a few I can say uh, called one called uh, The Games Afoot or Homes for the Holidays, uh, which I got to play Sherlock Holmes. Uh, that's a highlight in my. Uh, career as an actor uh that was a lot of fun to play um an iconic character but uh bring a comedic twist to it mm -hmm. uh, and i played uh sherlock holmes twice in two different shows uh and i would do it over and over again if uh i were allowed to <laughs> um and then yeah uh arsenic and old lace um which was made into a movie with Cary grant a long time ago uh, that's a wonderful play uh, i mean i guess some of those are the highlights uh when it comes to acting um, and then as, uh, when it comes to, you know, writing, if you want to get into that, I've written and I've published five, actually, I just found out, uh, three weeks ago that I've published my sixth play. Congratulations. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm excited for that. So I've had six plays published, which is super exciting. And, uh, they're, um, performed, produced, uh, all over the world. Uh, which is really nice. At first it was just the U.S. And then I started getting notifications saying, your play is being done in China. <laughs> and I'm like, I must be a pretty big deal in China. <laughs> uh, no, but 
so yeah, it was, uh, it, you know, so, um, but I've written probably over tw about 26, 27 plays, um, and they've all been produced in some way, uh, either uh, on like a, you know, a prof more of a professional stage or like in a class um, or camp uh, that I that I teach, as you know. Um, so yeah, that's um, what was that? What el what else was it? Uh, Did you want to know? Uh, I think I think you answered it. Yeah. Boom! I answered it. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> acting and and, and uh, lighting. <laughs> I mean that's primarily what I do, and I and I work for a theater company. I teach uh, in live theater workshop, as you well know. Uh, also, um, I do. So I'm surrounded by theater all the time. It's a wonderful job. I couldn't ask for uh, a better gig. Um, speaking of uh, live theater workshop, um, how did you come to uh, become a teacher and to act and direct um, at the at LTW? Yeah, so I started acting there, um, boy, right right out of high school. I think when I was uh, 18, I knew uh, someone who worked there. Um, she was actually stage managing and she she mentioned me uh, for a part. I think someone dropped out. I wasn't lucky enough to get it the first time around, I guess, <laughs> and, uh, which happens a lot in theater. So be warned, be ready for that. Um, and yeah, they, she just um, told the director who contacted me and said, hey, this person recommended you. Would you like to come in and audition? Though they were running out of time, so I don't think it was an audition so much as I could have stumbled over every word and they probably would have said, brilliant. <laughs> um, just, because, just because they needed someone, not because I was actually brilliant. Um, so I, I started there uh, in a, um, a show, and for the life of me, I can't remember the name of the show. It starts with Luann, and I know the word Hampton. It's like a four <laughs> or a five name title character. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess they liked what I did, because then they asked me to come and uh, be in Of Mice and Men. Uh, uh, a very popular show. So I played uh, George in that. And then um, that just started my, I think I might have moved in that time frame. And then I came back and it just sort of started my trajectory in, with the theater. Um, so I've been acting there for a long time. And then I was asked to direct. So I did that. Um, and then when it comes to classes, um, they just asked if I was interested in doing um, classes, teaching classes, I had done some shows with mm -hmm. with people that worked there, and um, as you know, like Amanda, Michael, yeah, and, yeah, they had asked me to. Uh, they asked if I was interested, and I said sure. So I, I did a few classes, and then one summer I, I taught a camp, and um, a couple people had to drop out uh, teachers. And they just mm -hmm. said, hey, are you interested in teaching another one? Again, I was just thrown in. That's, <laughs> I think that's a story. <laughs> um, and I was thrown in, and I loved it, and they must have liked me, and they asked if I was interested in um, applying for a position there as the assistant director to, to the children's programming and the outreach coordinator to help with that. And I said yes, and uh, the rest is history. I've been working there for quite a while now. So that's where that all started. So I've been with Live Theater Workshop for a long time. Cool. Yeah, I was going to say my dad was uh, he was looking through some uh, old photos at the the Arizona Daily Stars photo archive and found a cool. whole bunch of pictures of of old LTW shows. So yeah, there's I'll, a lot of them. Yeah. No, I was just going to say there's there's a lot. I've sometimes gone on there to see if uh, you know, go online to see if some of the old stuff that that I've done or I was somehow a part of uh, back back in the day. Um, some things I can find and it's really weird to see like faces that I haven't seen in years and try to remember, uh, the shows that, that I, I did with them. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I know, uh, also speaking of your, uh, career's greatest hits, uh, you've done a few short films, um, one of which you are currently working on, um, so uh, what have those experiences been like and how does your knowledge from directing and acting in theater transfer over to those short films? Um, so, yeah, so theater, 
theater and it, it, my experience with with film um, more anything more than anything short film um, I've done quite a few of those um, over the years um, and my experience is there's and and some actors might disagree with me I I, I don't think there's a lot a difference between the two uh, there are differences in, and it's really mm -hmm. just kind of the the level at which you're um, for lack of a better word, acting. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, um, <laughs> you know, because you still have to play the scene real, um, whether you're on stage or on, on film, the, the difference is, and, and you know, well, here's the thing that there's still people looking at you, you know, there's yeah. a lot, of, you know, there's audience members staring at you. Um, and then there's crew members staring at you. The first short film I ever did, I remember, you know, you see, you're so used to seeing film as an audience member and when you're, when I was first cast in a short film, I remember the first thing I, I remember thinking, and I didn't say this out loud. I don't think I did, <laughs> but I might have. Um, I just remember thinking, are, are all these people gonna be in here while while I'm doing this? <laughs> like, I'm like, isn't it just gonna be me and the camera and the director, maybe? Uh, you know, and this was obviously I was very young, but uh, but I just remember thinking like, oh my gosh, there's there's a lot of people in this, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, you so and luckily the theater back background helps that a little bit um but you know i think it's it's a lot of just the level of of, of um of how you're acting i mean you know it, it's how you're conveying emotions and, and, and you know on film obviously it's it's usually closer to your face so you you know you don't have to do quite as much uh that's the biggest thing is the you know you, you heighten it a little bit on on stage but you also don't want to heighten it so much that it, it, it's not grounded um so I remember the first, a quick story. I remember the, um, not the first, but I was doing a, a, a show. It was a, a big comedic farce. And I played a character that ran around, slammed doors, come in, out, um, <laughs> trying to hide from my wife and, and, and then my best friend and just going crazy. And I got cast in this short film. I think it's listed on, on there, I think, uh, that you might have looked at. Uh, it's called Stan. And I played uh, this kind of serial killer. And it was a serious film. <laughs> <laughs> and... And me and um, I was acting with Shanna Brock, who I don't know if you know the name. I've done a lot of shows at Live Theater Workshop with her. She's a great actress. And we um, were doing uh, this movie together. And there's a scene in the car. And just to give you an idea. Uh, and we did a couple takes. And it's a very intimate you know, scene in this car between her and I. And it's at night. Yeah. And there's green screen everywhere because they're going to make it at night. And it's raining and thunderstorming. <laughs> so it's real quiet. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Uh, after a couple of takes, the director pulls us aside and says, hey, um, <clears throat> Stephen, Shanna, uh, can I talk to you for a second? We're like, yeah. And we felt pretty good. We're like, yeah, that, that was a pretty good take. <laughs> and he's like, hey, um, can you bring it down about to a level one? Right now you're at about a level 15. <laughs> 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 one. So both of us, without realizing it, we're, we were just kind of, I guess, I guess you could just call it we were overacting, you know, uh, because we're, we're not, we're used to being on stage and we're literally doing a show a big farce on the weekends in between these shoots so we mm -hmm. were still in farce mode and then we realized that was the first time i realized and then later on i even i think i saw a couple takes of of that and i didn't even realize it but when you see it you're like oh yeah oh boy what am i doing with my face <laughs> that's not that's not real i'm an alien um so um so yeah i think just you know i, I don't find too much in, in, when it comes to the difference between the two it's just um you know you just gotta bring it down a few notches and just still play the scene and you're, you know, listen to your scene partner mm -hmm. is the biggest thing I can, even as a director, just listen to your scene partner and be in the moment. Well, I'd imagine with a, with a short film, it's, it's a lot different than stage in the uh, perspective of like, you're not able to key off of the audience's reactions. Cause that's part of the fun part oh. of, of theater is, you know, you get to see, how the audience is reacting and you can change, you know, vocal inflections and things like that based off of that. Yeah, that's very smart, Nate. Absolutely. It's, um, that's, a, that's, I mean, that's a big thing is, is, it, is the reaction of the audience. Um, you know, when you're on stage, the audience is, you know, that's, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a big difference between, <clears throat> I think between, uh, an audience in the theater and, you know, a whole crew watching you, you know, there could mm -hmm. be a lot of people, for an audience, you're, you know, you're, you're not going to have a show unless you have an audience. 
I mean, you can yeah. rehearse and do a scene with someone over and over and over, but unless you have an audience to enjoy it and laugh and cry and go through all, uh, all the emotions that you're supposed to for the particular show, um, you know, what's, what's the point? So mm -hmm. they become an audience. I, I found out the more I did it is you kind of got to embrace the audience. They're part of the show whether you want to say it or not. And I know some actors will go like, I don't, I've heard actors say, I don't even know the audience is there. And that, that doesn't make sense to me <laughs> because um, it doesn't mean you're not in the moment, but I'm very aware of the audience. I think you kind of have to be, you know, like you said, they start laughing and you have to pause or um, there's a moment that went a little different that sometimes you notice didn't get an, uh, a reaction that you're used to mm -hmm. getting every night and suddenly you're uh, and you're in your head and you gotta try to get back into it which is listening to the scene and your scene partner um so that is a big difference between the two so um that's uh yeah that's that's great um and then uh yeah how about the the short film you're working on right now or you know um how's that been going and and are you excited or nervous or because you just started filming, right? We actually haven't started filming. We start Monday. It's a two day shoot. It's a short film Monday and Tuesday of next week. Um, I think, remember the old, uh, I get thrown into things. I think I was <laughs> um, thrown into this one. Um, <laughs> if you have titles for your, for your shows, this one should be something about thrown into um, when, when somebody else drops out. Um, no. So I, I don't, I don't actively go out and look for short films because I'm mm -hmm. so busy with the theater. Um, but I think a few weeks ago, I think somebody probably had to drop out and um, they, I know the, one of the producers on the, the film, I've worked with other things with him uh, on other things. And uh, he mentioned me and the director and I talked and we hit it off. And so, um, yeah, so I've only really known about the project a few weeks and tonight's really our only, uh, our, only rehearsal uh, between me. Um, it's 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 a dark comedy. I, I probably I, you know, I don't know how much I can say. Um, not that it's a big secret, but uh, um, yeah, <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah, a big Hollywood movie, but um, I don't want to give away anything. But it's um, you know it's basically this. Uh, the director slash writer um, used to be a waiter, and he had these two people who argued over paying for the check. It was a big family. Um, event and mm -hmm. they slowly argued over paying for the check and it became a big deal. Like they, there was, you know, they had too much pride to be like, you can pay for it. And, um, <laughs> you know, somehow they were both headed to the family and, and uh, the waiter was caught in between this. So this um, named Daniel, he thought of this idea a long time ago and, um, and wrote this film and it's a dark comedy. It kind of starts that way. And then it becomes a lot bigger and darker and comedic than what happened to him. But um but yeah, that's kind of the premise. And I'm one of the guys that is trying to pay for the check. <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight's our first rehearsal, so I'm looking forward to it. Cool. All right. Well, um, I have compiled here some questions that were sent in by listeners and theater people, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so first off, this is from... Uh, Andrew. Andrew asked, how do you find auditions and open calls when you don't live in an area like New York that consistently has a need for actors? Uh, well, that's, there's going to be more ways maybe than I can tell you only because again, I'm not, I haven't actively been looking for, for work in a long time. Um, because I'm just so busy. Uh, yeah theater here in tucson <laughs> um that um but you know i, I don't know it's, i mean i know there used to be a publication backstage i think that's still online um you know the biggest thing i would say is go online i mean i know that's an easy answer but but go online if you have an agent you know depending on where you live um there are some great local agents that you can get in contact with that that i know even in tucson um it's been a while since I've dealt with agents in Tucson, so I couldn't really name any of them, unfortunately. But, but I know there are some because I know actors in town that that get work through them, uh, and not just in Tucson, but in California. But, mm -hmm. um, but you know, and also a great thing to do is even um, I know the question was kind of pertaining to also outside of where you live, but 
you know, get involved with as much stuff, even that, that is in your hometown that comes into town, because a lot of things, it's, Tucson's getting bigger and bigger. Like, I think they're trying to bring Westerns back to old Tucson. They're, 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 I think they're opening up that studio again. And, um, just be involved in stuff. Cause you know, it's like networking, you know, you're going to meet people and they're going to remember you. And if you work hard and, um, you show discipline and, and you're a good, you're a good person. They're going to remember you and, and get you going for other things. So just get involved in things and, and jump online. I wish I had better answer than that. I, it's been a while since I, since I've really actively looked. So. I was going to say, I, I mean, on the internet is sort of a, a, a magical thing in that regard, because, you know, even, even uh, college students now can post casting calls for people in their areas so yeah it is you said it perfectly it's a magical thing especially compared to when i was out of school we did look in the paper for uh short films uh for for everything i mean we didn't have i remember i was in um and I, you know I, I don't need to get into it but and i'm not movie dropping right now i promise but uh, <laughs> it just popped to my head that um there's a movie called ali with will smith um that I'm an extra in that. And, and listen, if you, if you, um, if you watch the movie and it's the first fight with Sonny Liston, and if you pause that thing, I'm on there for a good 20, 30, seconds, 20, 30 minutes. Um, I'm a big part. If you don't pause it, I'm on there for about three seconds. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, uh, and I recommend just let it go. But, uh, but yeah, so the point of me saying that is I just, I, I when you said that, I specifically remember finding that, um, po uh, the I say post. See, that's how modern I am, Nate. Um, <laughs> I I saw the ad um, in in the paper saying extras wanted for Ali. I think I was ni nineteen or twenty in California. I lived in California, and uh, and I sent my headshot and resume, and I got a call, and I became a crow's nest cameraman uh, in the in, in the movie. Um, with uh, it's set in the seventies, so I had all seventies hair. 70s. <laughs> it's a really good look for me. So to check it out. Uh, cool, but, yeah. yeah. I think you're right. Online is, is, is magical nowadays. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then um, Andrew also asked, this was their, uh, this was a... He gets two questions? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Uh, but uh, um, Andrew, who is spoiled with two questions, uh, uh, asked... Uh, what do you find most fun about teaching young actors theater? Um, I, well, I, I, so much, I mean, what immediately comes to mind is, is a couple things. One is when, when I, I didn't start acting until I was in high school. Um, I didn't really even know there was a, a acting was a kind of a thing. I mean, I kind of knew, but until mm -hmm. I started high school. Um, so before that, I look at the students that come in through live theater workshop, and I see how how young some of them are, including you at one point. <laughs> um, <laughs> now you're you're much older, uh, and it kind of it makes me so happy. It kind of fills my heart, really. Uh, that some of these kids come in and they're so enthusiastic about it and they get so excited for parts and sometimes they count their lines, which you're really not supposed to, but they're into it. <laughs> they want to know how many lines they got. And, and even though we tell them not to, to count them and, and they're, they're anxious to highlight their lines and they're anxious to start blocking. And sometimes they're not in the mood. I just, I love that. And I wish that I could have had that experience when I was younger. Um, so I, I just, you know, the feeling I get is, is extraordinary for that to, to, to watch these young kids and also to, um, you know, I, I've done, a, I, I, I've, I've had a lot of experience on stage and, and off stage as a director and it's fun to, to, to pass on things that I've learned over and more than anything, just experiences that I've had and, and pass that on in some kind of way and, and watch, watch these kids that have been with us um, since they were, really really small um mm -hmm. you know first second third grade and some of them have graduated um it, it's just amazing to see i mean i think that's probably my favorite part of it i mean really it's just the, like if i stand back and look at the big picture is just 
to see these wonderful people, these kids become adults and go on to do wonderful stuff, whether it's theater or not. And some of them still move on to do a lot of theater, move away to New York and um, California and Chicago and anywhere else. And uh, I love that. I love it. Cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine that would be really cool. Um, yeah, because, you know, you know, these kids as students and then they get older and then you have a different kind of relationship with them because suddenly they're not students anymore. They're adults mm -hmm. and, you know, they're real people. They're real humans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's just fun. It's fun to, to, to get to know them in a different way as well. So, um, And then uh, uh, Evan sent in and asked, uh, how difficult is it to direct a show and are there any um issues or things like that with the actors or crew that make it um more difficult if at all um if if you do a lot of preparation and you read the script a lot and you have an idea of the show at least this is my um approach to directing um and you have ideas and you have a, a sense and themes and, and you kind of know what you want to do with the show and you have a very good sense of it um coming into rehearsals it's you know and you got good actors it's 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 a lot of fun and there aren't too many issues that arise you know for me i'm very i'm a very loose director i because as an actor i like to try things i like directors mm -hmm. that let me try things I'm, I'm going to fail, you know, nine times out of 10, but that 10th time, um, hopefully I grab it and, uh, and I can run with it. And directors that let me play, um, that's important to me. I, I want to fail on stage. Uh, mm -hmm. and we tell the, our students that is it's okay to fail. It's what you should be doing. It's rehearsal. Do it now. So you don't have to do it later. Um, <laughs> so try things, try crazy things. Um, so as a director, I approach it the same way. I want my actors to try things. I tell them right at the beginning, I don't usually, pre-block anything um i'll have if there's you know if it's a big farce or something that's takes certain you know um a, a timing issues or if it's like a stage combat issue or you know an exit entrance at the same time that you have to work out then i will pre-block that but for the most mm -hmm. part i just let the actors be really loose and comfortable and let them uh have fun and fail and and we talk about it you know and um so and, and when it comes to issues i as a director, I don't think I've ever had any real issues. Um, yeah, I, I, I wish I had a better answer for that, but I don't think I've ever had a, a, a real issue as a director. It's, it's been pretty fun. Well, and, and uh, you know, you've directed me a couple of times, and that's, that's one of my favorite things about you as a director is it's like you trust the actor's instincts, and that's, you know, that's super fun to... Uh, like you said, be able to play around, be able to try different things and know, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world if you screw up in a rehearsal. Yes. And everybody remember that it's not the end of the world if you screw up in a rehearsal and it's, and you may be, may be embarrassed a little bit, but you get over it. And, um, yeah, I, uh, like I said, not to repeat it, but uh, acting, acting is, is, was always my first thing way before directing. So as soon as I started directing, I knew that, okay, well, I'm not going to, there, there's a big difference. Usually I can't say that across the board, but when I be, when I'm being directed by uh, someone that only directs as opposed to someone who's an actor slash director, mm -hmm. um, I think the uh, actor directors sometimes have a little more patience because they know what it's like to be on stage and they understand that, as an actor, you're trying to find things. I find a lot. I do a lot of homework, um, but I trust my instinct um, a lot on stage. I And for me, so much of it comes when I'm on stage because I don't know what my scene partner or partners are going to do. Um, mm -hmm. And that's part of listening and playing off them. So, so much of it comes from the moment. Um, so when I work with directors that are really only directors, sometimes you, you notice a difference. They have a, a specific way they want, they have a vision and they don't want to stray from that vision. I love having them having a vision. Please have, you know, have your vision. I want you to, I want you to, as a director, I want you to come in um, and know the script more than I do. <laughs> um, 
but also don't be afraid to stray away from it a little bit because you got to trust your actors. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, now I'm going to hop into what I like to call the theater threes, which, um, there are three questions that I ask every person who I, uh, interview for the podcast and, um, yeah, just sort of little, um, things that, that people don't frequently ask, but are definitely curious about, you know, uh, about, you know, interests as far as plays go and things like that. So the, uh, the first question actually coincidentally, um, uh, this is the same question that, uh, one of our listeners and one of your students, Ivy, sent in. So, um, <laughs> um, but uh, the first question is, what is your favorite musical and why? Uh, for the longest time, it was Les Mis. Um, I saw it in New York when I first moved out there when I was 18 to go to school. And um, I was, I, I I remember I was with a friend of mine and she and I were watching it. And when the, when the play was over, she says, so what'd you think of the show? Cause, uh, and I said, and I told her it was amazing. Oh my gosh. And mm-hmm. she's like, well, she's like, she's like, that's funny because uh, I kind of felt like I was alone the whole time because I was leaning forward the whole time. I like didn't focus on anything. but the play. <laughs> I was completely mesmerized. Um, and then anytime somebody came to New York to visit me in my time there, they were like, let's go see Phantom of the Opera. I said, no, 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 no. I love Phantom, don't get me wrong, but we're going to go see Les Mis. <laughs> It'll change your life. Um, and then um, I probably will switch that up. Recently, I saw a couple, of few years-ish ago, I was in New York and I saw Hadestown with the, um, with the original cast uh, right after it won the Tony. Cool. And I think, I think it, it, took the, it took the crown. I, I could not stop thinking about that play for days and days after. It's an amazing musical, it's beautiful. You know, what's funny about that is I I lean towards comedy. So the fact that my two shows mm-hmm. were very not comedy, <laughs> um, <laughs> quite quite the opposite actually. Uh, but yeah, I, I think now it's Hades Town until I see the next big thing, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> cool. Um, the second question is, what actor did you look up to as a kid and why? Uh, I, the first one that comes to mind without a doubt is Charlie Chaplin. Um, not to say I was around with Charlie Chaplin. I'm not, I'm not that old. Um, <laughs> I, um, but I used to watch him even as a kid. Um, and I'm going to give you a kind of an answer that's going to sound like I'm just being funny, but even stuff like Looney Tunes, my dad used to watch Looney Tunes all the time. And I used to watch him and just be like, oh, completely transfixed with like Bugs Bunny and Yosemite Sam and, and all mm-hmm. these, you know, and, and not just the voices, which were a lot, um, which were so much of it, uh, but just the animation of it and the the crazy things they did with their faces and their bodies and the way they contorted. And I'm like, this isn't real. And it wasn't. But as a kid, you watch it and you're like, this is amazing. So I remember uh, at an early age, I just used to love that. So um, I think that's why I kind of started gravitating towards, uh, I loved silent movies for some reason when I was a kid. And Charlie oh. Chaplin was like number one to this day. He is... I can still watch him and laugh or get something, take something away from one of his films. So Charlie Chaplin and, uh, and more modern, I just like character actors. I, I, I like a lot of character actors that can mm-hmm. just play many things. Um, and yeah, a lot of character stuff. But my number one is Charlie Chaplin. It's an, it's a dated reference, but I'm going to say. And uh, to your point about um, Looney Tunes and stuff, you know, I've, uh, I've gravitated toward shows like Looney Tunes and um, and The Simpsons and even some live action comedies like um, The Office that are just like, you know, they're, uh, I think, you know, the writing and the directing and the way that they they make it is is so incredibly funny. And and that sort of amazes me because it's like the way that somebody can can think all of that up and put it into animation, you know, is really cool. 
yeah, I think it's it's an amazing medium, and uh, I think um, I, I think what's great about animation is like it's kind of sky's the limit, right? You can yeah, you can do anything. I mean, you really can. And uh, and I thought about some of the plays I've written. I thought um, there's actually quite a few of them that I thought, oh, this would be such a great animated film. Oh, <laughs> um, and um, so yeah, I, I you know. Um, I suggest, like I said, like like you were saying, the, the writing is such an important thing. So, um, at, you know, I, I say Charlie Chaplin, and, and I stick with that answer. But, but, but yeah, I, I watch movies and actors that you know can pull off sometimes tough dialogue, and you know, I'm in, in awe of them. And, and 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 you know, with the shows you mentioned, even it, it goes to show you there's so much, you know, sometimes as an, uh, a viewer you don't see, but there's so much that goes into that and you know you it's the writing it's the directing it's the acting it's the you know the grip it's the you know i'm kind of in awe at all of it i i love it i love i love the whole business i think yeah definitely um and then the uh the third and final question for you um did andrew oh. ask this one i'm just kidding <laughs> i'm just kidding andrew <laughs> Um, the third and final question in the set of theater threes is what advice do you have for theater kids or anybody wanting to get into, uh, theater in any capacity? Uh, it, um, I'm gonna, I think experience go out and do be in as many plays and be a part of theater as much as you can. Or if you want to be in movies or if you want to be, you know, whatever you want to, to do, do first of all, do it at all. Um, Cause that opens more doors for you. Uh, and it gives you more experience in different avenues. Um, mm -hmm. But I think just experience, I, 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 you know, I, I don't, I went to school for theater and for acting. And uh, so I would never knock it. I think it's important um, to get, you know, theater education, but um don't let it stop you. You don't need a BFA. You don't need to uh, take this certain class. You don't need this to do it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, you just go out and, and get experience. Audition, audition, audition. Um, and there's a lot of roles that you will not get. But guess what? That's an experience you have. And if you go in there and say, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time acting. I'm going to audition. And that's what I shifted. When I was in California and I started auditioning, I shifted my mind frame. I went on a few auditions and I, you know, I was getting them. I wasn't getting them. And I was like, oh man, you know, and you're disappointed. And even though yeah. you're told that, like, you're not going to get, you're going to fail a lot. <laughs> you're not going to get roles. <laughs> you just got to keep going. It's still, you go home and, you know, you still can't help them being a little sad and depressed and waiting by the phone. Um, uh, and, you, but if you go in with the mind frame of, okay, I'm, I'm going to go in and I'm doing theater, right? I get to go in and act for an mm -hmm. audience. And if you go in with that mind frame, you leave going, oh, I just did a thing and I acted and I had fun, you know, so you just got to kind of have that mind frame and just know that, you know, it, you know, you're not going to get everything and uh, just experience. Don't don't let it stop you. Um, take the classes, take, you know, go to college, do whatever you need to do. But the best thing you can get is experience. So don't let it stop you from just being in everything you can. Because the people you work with, you're going to learn so much from. Every director you work with, every actor you work with, you're going to learn things that I, I, I've learned. As much as I learned in school, and, and I learned a lot in school, I can tell you most of what I still carry with me are things when I got out of school and I started doing it on a regular basis with a new, new actors every play, new directors every play, and seeing how people work and taking pieces here and pieces there and listening to incredibly smart directors give me notes and tell me why I'm not doing a good job uh, in a very, <laughs> in a very good way, uh, in a professional way. Um, it, it, it helps a lot. So just experience, get as much experience as you can. That's the biggest thing I can say to young people that want to get involved. And uh, take classes at Live Theater Workshop uh, with uh, the teacher, Stephen Frankenfield. Yeah, edit that whole last part out. So what I meant to say, Nate, was <laughs> take classes at Live Theater Workshop, 3322 East Fort Lowell. <laughs> uh, yeah, take as many classes as you can. <laughs> uh, 
Thanks well, for calling that, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Stephen. Um, this was such a fun, such a fun chat, and I'm, you know, I'm so happy that you know I just keep learning more and more from you every every time I see you. So, well, thank you, Nate, and um, and. To turn it around on you, you've been with the theater for a while, and I've seen you grow uh, as an actor and a writer, um, <laughs> which you wrote an incredible play that was in the uh, Young Playwright Contest, which was awesome. Um, but even you have grown uh, so much as an actor, and it's uh, it's um, a privilege to watch you to watch you grow and and become um, become the actor and the person you you are becoming. You're a good Thank dude. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. Absolutely. I mean it. All right. Well, uh, enjoy your rehearsal tonight, and thank you again. Thank you, Nate. I uh, appreciate you having me, and uh, I'll see you soon. Sounds like a plan. All right. <laughs> see you later, Nate. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Stephen. I really appreciate you chatting with me. It was a blast. Listeners, if you are interested in checking out the work that Stephen and his coworkers do at Live Theater Workshop, visit livetheaterworkshop.org. Stephen's plays are published and available worldwide, some of which are available at the link in the show notes. If you know someone who'd enjoy this podcast, please share it with them so that they can learn from experts around the theater industry like Stephen. If you are a theater kid or a theater kid at heart, and you're interested in submitting a question for our next episode, you can shoot us an email with your question to theatercues at natewileyproductions.com. Stay tuned for our announcement of the actor whom I'll chat with next episode via the podcast feed and via our mailing list. If you'd like to join the Theater Cues mailing list, visit the link in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening today. Theater Cues is produced by Nate Wiley Productions and me, Nathaniel Wiley, featuring music by Joyheads. Joyheads is a Pasadena-based music group composed of Juan Gomez, Daniel Johnson, and Jeremy King. The song that you heard in this episode is a real good time. If you like what you hear on the podcast, follow the podcast and check out our website, natewileyproductions.com, for a wide variety of content, from historical series to photo galleries and much, much more. Again, thank you for listening, and don't forget to turn on a ghost light when the theater goes dark.